In today's video, I'm jumping into an alternative photo editing software. Hey, what's up? It's Chris from Rocket Films, and yes, in today's video, I'm jumping into a piece of software that is described as an alternative solution to Adobe Lightroom. Different pieces of software can work differently for different content creators, so it's really important that you know what's on the market because then you can make an informed decision on what piece of software works best for you. So without wasting any more time, let's jump straight into Luminar and let's start editing some photos. So once we're in Luminar, we just want to open an image, so we're just going to go through and search for a CR2 image file and just import that. So this image is the wrong way round, so I just need to rotate this to the left, so image, rotate left, and then we're just going to go through and adjust the colors. So we'll go into add filters, raw develop, and we're just going to go through and tweak these levels a bit. So we're just going to pull the exposure up, highlights down, shadows up, blacks down a touch, and then we're just going to warm this shot up a little bit by pulling on the temperature. And now from here, we can go back into the filters and we can just scroll through until we find the LUT mapping effect. And now in LUT mapping, I'm just gonna go through and search for my desired LUT. So I use this really cool LUT here called Halundite, I think it is. So I'm just gonna drag that on. So in the LUT mapping tab, I'm just gonna go through, I'm gonna pull the contrast down because that is extremely contrasted. And if you can see with this eyeball, you can see this is the shot without the LUT and the shot with the LUT. So this is making a real difference to the shot already. So we're going to go back into the filters catalog and we're just going to apply a vignette. And a vignette is basically that soft black or soft white lighting in all of the corners of a photo. And the whole purpose of this is to attract your eyes towards the center of the image. And then we can go back into the filters catalog and then in the filters catalog we can just add some really cool effects. As you can see you've got brilliance and warmth, you've got fog golden hour, soft glow, soft focus. You've got curves, dodge and burn, HSL, microstructure. There's so many really cool effects in this software. However, I can't go into all of these in today's video because it would be an extremely overly edited photo. So we don't need to do that. So I'm just gonna go down into the utility tab and I'm gonna drag top and bottom lighting onto this effect. So once we've got the top and bottom lighting on, we can pull that up towards the sky we can just expand that a little bit. And then we just basically wanna pull the top exposure down just a touch and pull the bottom exposure up. This is basically gonna pull the exposure in the sky down a little bit and it's gonna pull the exposure in the shadows just up a touch. This is gonna make sure that our highlights aren't overexposing and it's gonna make sure that our shadows are exposed correctly. And then once you're happy with that look, we can go back into the filters catalog and my favorite filter of all time is the sun rays filter. So the sun rays filter is basically adding fake sun rays into your shot. So you've got this circle and this is the source of the sun rays. So you can just drag this up to the top of the shot because you can't see the sun in this image. And we're just gonna go through and adjust some of these settings. So we've got the length, we've got the warmth of the sun flare, we've got the radius, we've got all the glow radius, the glow amounts, the warmth. You just wanna basically adjust these settings that it matches your scene correctly. Now, I personally don't like to overdo effects like this because they can look really artificial extremely quickly. But if you just add a really soft amount of this sun rays filter, then this can look really awesome and really cool. So there you go. If we have a look at the before and after, this is before and then after it looks really awesome. These sun flares are really cool and I'm really big fan of the color of this photo. However, the problem is I'm still slightly off center. So I'm going to go up to the tools and I'm just going to go into crop. And then we'll just adjust the crop and the rotation just a touch. Now, once I'm happy with that, I can just press enter. And that's this image now complete. So then I'm just going to go up and save this by going up to file, export, save this as New York handstand. Make sure that the quality is full and we'll just save that. And here we go. We have another photo and this was taken in the morning in Paris. And as you can see, the exposure is all over the place. So. I'm just going to start by going into LUT mapping and choosing my favorite LUT. And then from here, I can go into the raw develop tab. And I just need to bring back some of those highlights because it is so overexposed. Actually, before I carry on with that, I'm just going to go back into the LUT and I'm just going to reduce the strength of that LUT. Now I can just adjust the exposure, the highlights, the shadows, the whites, the blacks. We can do everything we like here to bring back that detail from the shot. Now, as you can see, this raw develop has really helped to bring this photo back to life. We can see the detail in the sky and in the shadows now. 
But to help with this even more, I'm going to go into top and bottom lighting. So I'm just going to pull the top all the way down and pull the bottom up a touch. So if we pull this down, you can see that the sky is shadowed, but the Eiffel Tower is also shadowed. So I'm just going to rotate this round just a touch and then we can just readjust this so that just the corner of the sky is underexposed just a touch and that's bringing back some of that detail. So to progress from here, we're going to go into the sun rays effect in the filters catalog. We're going to position this to this overexposed section in the clouds here because I think this is where the sun was bleeding through. And then we can go through and we can just all of these settings here just to make sure that it matches up with the scene perfectly. Now, if we toggle the eyeball on and off, you can see how much of a difference this is making. And now we're jumping back into the filters catalog and we're just adjusting the hue shift just a tiny amount. I just want to pull out the reg just a touch more. So we're just going to drag this across a tiny amount. And now from here, I'm just going to go through and I'm just going to search for fog. I'm just going to add a very small amount of fog. And then I'm going to go into the filters catalog one more time and search for structure. So lastly, we're just going to add some structure onto this and this can look really stupid really quick. So make sure you don't overdo your structure. Make sure that this is only around 30 because if you go up to 100, this is going to look really ridiculous and you don't want to overdo this. And now if we go up to the top, we've got this eyeball icon and then we've got this left and right icon. We'll press the before and after icon. And now as you can see, if I drag this across, this is the photo before, boring, overexposed, and then we drag this across. And we've got this amazing, beautiful, really warm photo. All of the shadows and the highlights are preserved and it looks really awesome. And there you go. Luminar is an extremely powerful photo editing software and I really can't wait to jump into this in more depth and understand more about what this program has to offer. The amazing people behind Luminar have very kindly given me a promo code for you. So if you wanted to download this software, then just follow the link in the description below and type the code Brooker in the promo code section for 10% off. Now you don't have to download Luminar and you don't have to download Adobe Lightroom to become a photographer. But if you want to develop your raw photos and you want to take your photos to the next level, then I would seriously consider making the investment. And that's it. Once I know more about Luminar and I've done my research on this more and had a bit more practice, I promise I'll make some more detailed videos and help you to become a better photographer in this piece of software. Thank you ever so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe hit that bell icon and I will see you tomorrow.